Taiwan's team of members carry out a free dental clinic for Syrian refugees in Jordan. We see how the Chiang Mai City School in Thailand was established nearly 10 years ago. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. To offer Syrian refugees in Jordan with much needed medical attention, Taiwan's Northern District team of members recently travelled to the country to organise a two-day free clinic at the Sahab refugee camp and provided those in need with free dental treatment. The Sahab refugee camp in Jordan shelters Syrian refugees who fled their homes over the course of the country's civil war. Chilly weather over the past five months has turned this place lifeless. However, today an organization from Taiwan has arrived to provide much needed medical care. Finding their way into the refugee camp, Taiwan's Northern District Tima members first moved medical equipment inside a tent prior to the free clinic. Brothers, thank you. Thank you so much. This is teamwork. Thank you, brothers. With all the equipment in place, volunteers then double-check the wiring before they operate the medical device. Together, the 22 Tima members are sparing no effort when it comes aiding the Syrian refugees. Many of the refugees suffer from serious tooth decay and fail to maintain their oral hygiene. However, they are unable to see a dentist as they cannot afford it. Thankfully, Tima members are here to provide free dental checkups, a first for many of the refugees. During the treatment, several patients are worried about the noise created by the medical device. Through the assistance of volunteer translators, dentists were able to carry out their treatment without a hitch. <laughs> Meanwhile, other volunteers helped patients in looking after their children. Thank you for helping us. We are very happy. You are truly amazing and so kind. Thank you so much. They really needed this dental treatment. This refugee camp was built some five months ago. And this is the first time an NGO has been here to offer their medical attention. Although Taiwan is unknown to most of these refugees, the humanitarian spirit demonstrated by the blue and white clad volunteers has left a deep impression. And thanks to Tsiji, the Sahab refugee camp has once again found a sense of life and vigor. Thank you. Moving to Canada as snowstorms continue to batter Vancouver, city volunteers braved the cold weather and made several trips transporting aid supplies in preparation of an upcoming aid distribution for impoverished families. Streets are covered in glistening snow. With temperatures plunging below freezing, a group of volunteers braved the icy cold weather to transport aid supplies. Some 10 volunteers work together to pack the aid supplies. Each parcel contains bath products, thick wool socks, tissues and daily necessities, which will address the dire needs of the impoverished this winter. As these supplies were purchased at a bargain price, volunteers had to transport the supplies themselves. Even the harsh weather does not wane their passion. Limited with space, this garage has been turned into a venue to pack the items. Working non-stop to pack the aid supplies, volunteers hope that recipients will be able to feel the warmth that is contained in these packs of love. 
In Indonesia's North Sulawesi, following the flooding in mid-January, the city foundation launched cash for work programs and free clinics in Manado to help. Inspired by the volunteer's selfless dedication, local resident Jeremy Mamesa wrote a song to express his thanks. Let's take a look. <laughs> Seeing a song called Tsuji, this is Manado resident Jerry Mamesa, who wants to express his thanks to the Buddhist NGO for its relief efforts following the flooding in mid-January. At first, I was not familiar with the Tsuji Foundation, and I was very confused with why the volunteers wanted to help us. To help less survivors in Monado rebuild their lives as quickly as possible, Tsuji initiated three cash reward programs and several free clinics. The volunteers' gestures soon clear away Jerry's doubts concerning the organization. Tsuji volunteers came to help us through this difficult time. All of us have seen improvement in our community. I'm truly amazed at the things they have done. The volunteers' gestures have deeply touched our hearts. Turning his gratitude into action, Jerry Mamesa decided to join Tsuji's cash for program. Using a shovel to clear away debris and mud, Jerry never imagined that he could become a giver too. I think there are a lot of people that want to join the volunteers' ranks, not just me. Everyone is very happy to have the chance to do good deeds alongside the volunteers. Thanks to Tsuji's cash reward program, local residents have learned to cherish their blessings and promise to encourage those around them to join the volunteers' ranks. In Taiwan, volunteers at the Tsuji Xintai Liaison Office in Xinjiang of New Taipei City have participated in the Wisdom at Dawn broadcast study group for a year now. Getting up early in cold weather is no longer a challenge, but a good habit many volunteers have come to adopt. Come 4.20 a.m. at the Tsuji Xintai Liaison Office in New Taipei City, participants of the morning study group are sincerely chanting the Buddhist scripture. At first, I had doubts about getting up around 3 in the morning, and I didn't have the faith that I could persist. But if we don't participate, it would seem like we are not cultivating our wisdom, so I thought we should improve ourselves regardless. Having overcome the challenge to wake up early each morning, volunteers find comfort in the increased number of their counterparts watching the Master's broadcast. I came back home late on Sunday morning. By the time I got back to Taipei, it was already past one, and by the time I was ready for bed, it was around two. Nevertheless, I still managed to come here at 4.20 a.m. Amid the sounds of sutra chanting are also laughter and applause. The Tsuji Xintai Liaison Office has joined the Wisdom at Dawn broadcast for over a year. Among the participants, Tai Junyan, who is in charge of connecting the internet, has had to wake up earlier than the rest of his fellow volunteers. In fact, when I first started, I had no idea how to even turn on the computer, so it was a mess. However, the master said, when one has the will, nothing is too difficult. From a learner to now an expert, Tai also gains spirituality through such morning study group. Huang Mongli, who decorates the venue each day, feels the same. I change my thoughts more quickly. Whatever unhappiness I come across, I'm able to think on the positive side and take in the master's dharma. The Wisdom at Dawn broadcast every morning allows the nearly 80 city volunteers here to start each day fresh and steady. Staying in Taiwan, next we meet 26-year-old Dang Yirong, who started a group on Facebook to promote the Wisdom at Dawn broadcast to more people. Despite the setbacks along the way, Dang has and will continue to share the Master's wisdom with those around her. 
curtains open to let the sun in. After Zhang Yirong gets up every morning, she updates her status on Facebook, much like other young people her age. When I saw how Master Zheng Yin wanted her disciples to learn the Buddhist teaching, I seized the opportunity to establish a group on Facebook because there are so many people on there already that I can spread the message to you. Zhang felt the internet was not restricted to time or location, and each repost helps the message to reach one more person, like Associate Professor Liao Junyu of Nanhua University's Department of Life and Death. I actually just saw the Jin's aphorism. When we are irritated by others, it is actually because we are still lacking in graciousness. Reflecting on this, often we are upset or think others are wrong, but it is because our view hasn't expanded and our hearts are narrow. This serves as a reminder in our daily life. Because of his participation in the group, Liao looks at his life from a different perspective now. However, among the other group participants, not many are as interactive as Liao. As replies and interactions decreased, so did Zhang's motivation. Sometimes you will post a teaching or send it in a private message, and if there is no reply, then you start to doubt yourself, am I making a difference? So I stopped doing it for a while. Later, Zhang restarted the movement because she finally realized what the Master meant when she said, give without asking for a return. Through sharing the Master's Dharma, I had hoped others would see it, and that was asking for a return. In the end, this expectation was causing me afflictions. Experiencing afflictions that stemmed from expectations, the 26-year-old looked to the Dharma to free her from it. Combining the power and strength of the internet, with a click of the mouse, messages can be spread from one corner of society to the next, thus stringing together the connections to form a web of infinite knowledge. With the increase in abnormal weather conditions and the number of natural disasters around the globe, all fingers points to climate change. And the latest studies by climatologists show that humans are the culprit behind global warming. If this is true, what can we do to slow down global warming? Perhaps the first step is to use an alternative source of energy. Here's more. If you leave chocolate on the table, it will start to melt. As the sun beats down on the roof causing heat to radiate through the ceiling, this creates quite a predicament for residents. When I come home, I feel like I've worked inside an oven, so I have to shut all the windows and doors and turn on the aircon. When I get the electricity bill two months later, it's a $5,080 bill. As southern Taiwan has abundant sunshine all year round, it is the perfect place for solar power generation. Not surprisingly, rooftop solar systems have found their way into southern Taiwan. Installing solar panels on rooftops not only shields homes from direct exposure to sunlight, but residents can also save quite a bit on the electricity bulb. The 66 households of this community, after five years of discussion, finally decided to lease their rooftop to a solar company to install solar panels. We leased our rooftop to solar contractors, who in turn sell the electricity to Thai Power. The profits they generate come back to us as rent. We get about $40,000 a year, and this is a 20-year lease. The electricity generated by solar energy in Tainan City can reach 1,343 kilowatt hour, which is 1.4 times higher than Taipei. Seeing the potential, Taiwan's Bureau of Energy hopes to complete the installation of 1 million rooftop solar panels by 2030. Similarly, in the United Kingdom, each year the government injects £100 million to fund community energy generation projects. To date, at least 5,000 communities have participated, and each household, on average, is saving up to £300 on electricity costs every year. There are hundreds of communities which are suffering from fuel poverty and unemployment. This gives people an opportunity. Who knew that sunlight could be a major source of renewable energy? To change our ways perhaps isn't that difficult after all. Every hour the sun radiates more energy onto the earth than our entire population uses in a year. 
The same goes for wind power. What needs to change, however, are the practices of burning fossil fuels, which are only leading us one step closer to the tipping point. What actions should we take in light of such change? There are two. One is to slow the process down, and the other is making necessary adjustments to our way of life. China installed a record 12 gigawatt of solar power panels last year. 14 gigawatts of wind power projects were also set up last year, and the government aims to install even more this year. According to the Renewable Energy Country Attractiveness Index, China ranks second, only behind the United States. As the cost of renewable energy projects are fairly high, there are other actions we can take to mitigate climate change. If there is anything we can do to limit the magnitude of long-term climate change, we should do it now. We should change our way of life to slow down the impact of climate change. However, as we are fast approaching the point of no return, can man still save the day? In the past, when we realized the CFC concentration in the atmosphere was too high, we took action and the concentration levels dropped. The gap was quite significant. Similarly, I believe that if mankind can raise their environmental awareness, it can truly make a difference. Only by realizing the magnitude of the problem we face and stepping up to act, will we be able to lessen the impact of climate change. As the Chiang Mai Tsuji School in Thailand near its 10th year anniversary, we look back and on how this first overseas city school was established in 1994 when volunteers visited northern Thailand to care for the needy. They saw the harsh environment students were studying in to help Tsuji build the Chiang Mai School which opened its doors to students in 2005 and has since injected an abundance of humanistic values into the local community. Tsuji volunteers from Taiwan first visited the impoverished children of Chiang Mai in 1994, giving the children their first mathematics lesson. <laughs> Under this thatched cottage, a simple blackboard, tables and chairs make up the classrooms in which these Chinese descendants study their mother tongue. Part of the three-year poverty alleviation program launched by Tsuji in Thailand focused on education, where scholarship funds were handed out to needy children. Having to attend the local school during the day, these children can only study Chinese after school. <laughs> Bad weather often results in electricity outages, Yet, children here remain as motivated as ever to learn. With support of the Fang District's government in Chiang Mai, as well as a kind-hearted donor, the first overseas city school was established here in Thailand. The groundbreaking ceremony means that everyone is on the move because we have a goal and an expectation to work towards. Building a school on 19 hectares of barren land was no easy task, as construction volunteers from Taiwan had to travel frequently to Chiang Mai. The children here have long waited for a school like this. The parents place their hope on their children, and these children's future lies in education. City volunteers organized a fundraising campaign to collect donations for the school's construction. I am deeply moved by the warmth felt here. On behalf of all the children, I would like to thank you all. At charity events, entrepreneurs kindly purchased whatever items they could and donated them again to raise further funds. Among them was Ling Chun Ling. When we were raising funds, I had all sorts of doubts inside. Why are you willing to donate despite being in debt? Why don't others have the heart to go? Built on the foundation of love, enrollment officially started in May 2005, and the Chiang Mai Tsuji School became the first school in Northern Thailand to teach Chinese. A group of Thai teachers also traveled to Taiwan for further training. I will not let them down. Yeah, 
placing an emphasis on moral education and character building. The result of this education system is evident in each and every student. This is such a wonderful school. I am deeply moved. At the school's first graduation ceremony, carried out in both Chinese and Thai, the vice president of the Tsuji Foundation, Wang Duanzhen, was on hand to offer words of encouragement. In order to become a talented martial artist, one must have one's energy flow through the front and back meridians of the body. In Tsuji, the meridians are humanitarianism and knowledge. Nearing its 10th year anniversary, the number of students studying at the Chiang Mai City School has continued to grow. Today, with City's humanistic education widely recognized by the Thailand government, the Buddhist NGO is not only bringing hope to children, but also adding color to their lives. Staying in Thailand at the graduation ceremony held at the Chiang Mai City School on March 1st, city volunteers from Taiwan were there as usual to offer their heartfelt blessings to the 152 graduates. Let's take a look. City volunteers traveled all the way from Taiwan to give their heartfelt blessings to this year's graduating class at the graduation ceremony of Thailand's Chiang Mai City School. Part of when you get to junior high school, all right? City founded the school a decade ago with the school grounds donated by entrepreneur Xiao Wei. Today he also shows up to celebrate the students' achievement. Now my employees' children are able to speak to me in Chinese, and that's something that makes me feel great. Over the past decade, the Chiang Mai City School has nurtured countless students. In fact, over 60 percent of this year's high school graduates have been accepted into university programs. During the ceremony, the 152 graduates put on a sign language performance. Later, the valedictorian offers his thanks to Tsuji on behalf of everyone. First and foremost, I want to thank Master Zheng Yan. Thank you for setting up this school and allowing us to grow up in such a loving environment. And I want to tell you, I will always love you. Thank you. Seeing their children growing up, parents are deeply moved and thankful for Tsuji's presence here. Our children are truly blessed as they can grow up with Master Zhen Yin's drama. I hope that I can become a mature person, learn to help those in need, and pay the love forward. As the enactment of the Dharma ship concludes the ceremony, parents, teachers, and volunteers join together to wish the graduates a bright future ahead. We go to Australia at the end of our show as March 2nd was the Clean Up Australia Day. City volunteers in Melbourne, like in the previous decade, invited friends and families to join the event to clean up their communities. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.